Hi. Sorry to bother you, but you wouldn't happen to be the leader of the Meridian City Renters Union, would you? I'm the one behind the holding company that owns all these rental properties here in the city, and I was wondering if maybe we could talk about the rent strike you guys have going on? I want to negotiate, just you and me. Nope. Just you and me. At least to start. Just the two of us right now, or I walk away. Deal? Thanks for letting me in. I love your place. <laughs> Who'd have thought after all these years I'd find you again under one of my own roofs? <laughs> it's funny how you always turn up. Oh, don't worry about it. Hey, is your cat supposed to be up there? Hey, are you all right there? You took a bit of a fall after I knocked you out. <laughs> Oldest trick in the book. Oh, don't worry about the ropes. I'm not like a yandere or a serial killer or anything, and believe me, I've killed you a hundred times. It never got me anywhere. Oh, yeah. I've killed you lots and lots of times. All across the map and every era of history. No, I'm not going to kill you this time. Uh, are you even listening to me? Like I said, it doesn't stick anyway. Don't worry about it. It'll be clear in a second here. You woke up too early. The elixir isn't ready. It's an elixir for remembering past lives. Now, just sit still for a minute. Yes. You have past lives. Everyone does, more or less. Well, except for me. I'm immortal, so I don't really deal with that stuff. Yeah, sure, I'm crazy. Whatever, just keep it down, all right? I'm too old for all that shouting. Nobody's going to hear you anyways. We're in an old farmhouse way out in the countryside. I've been thinking of giving it a nice little remodel. Thinking about making it a wedding venue. What do you think? <sighs> I swear to Sir Ket, I am not going to kill you, you dumb bastard. For the love of... <sighs> Couldn't you have stayed knocked out for just like one more minute? This, this isn't about the strike. I couldn't care less about that right now. This is about me and you. I'm immortal. I've lived for years without number. I bathed in the rivers of the east when the dawns were young. I was lulled to sleep by the west wind in the days when the heavens still touched the earth. I built cities that you children of the future have no idea even existed. I have lived a life unbound by the changing of seasons. And throughout it all, you have been there. My greatest, no, my only enemy. The other side of a war bound by neither space nor time, a war without frontiers. I don't care if you believe me. Like I said, it'll be clear in a second. You know, if you didn't want me to do this, you should have left me in peace. I was just trying to replenish my savings a little bit. I'm rich, but I've got a long life ahead of me, so I've got to make some money somehow. Uh, okay, sure, I had a little extra even. I was even thinking about maybe becoming a public figure in this city. Maybe even make a run for mayor. But no, 
you had to rear your stupid, ugly little head again. Now, even if I win this strike, I still look like a bastard. Nobody would vote for me. You couldn't even let me have a little dignity? I've given up ruling the world. Was one little city too much to ask? One little city out of ten thousand tucked away in the forgotten corner of a forgotten nation. <sighs> Forget it. The elixir's almost done. <sighs> there we go. Drink this. Drink it, or I'll make you drink it. I'm not playing around. I used up two centuries of mana on this thing, so, crazy or not, you better play along. It's not even that gross. It's cinnamon-flavored. It'll go down like a good cappuccino. Now tip your head back. Tip your head back. See? Not so hard, right? Now, I hope you packed your bags, kid, because we're about to go on a trip. It's about 3,000 years ago. The place is a kingdom so old, its name has been forgotten. This is the first time we met. <laughs> look at me up there on that throne, all haughty and resplendent. Ugh. Oh. I might look the same, but compared to now, I am just a kid. So sure of myself. God, if we could interact with these memories, I'd slap myself. I am cringing. That old lady there in the cloak? The one being forced to the ground? That's you. You were a priestess for Sir Ket, the goddess that created me and sent me here. Instead of helping me conquer the earth like you were supposed to, though... You got bent out of shape about all the despotism, started preaching against all the pillaging and slavering, and now we're here. Might want to close your eyes for this part. There goes your head. I thought that was the end of it, and in a way it was, but you had followers. Not many at first, but there was a whole secret web of you guys I didn't learn about until later. Eventually I did, but it was too late. They ran to the hills. They went out among the hill tribes bringing medicine and technology that I'd hoarded for myself. Cities sprang up almost overnight. Soon my empire had an enemy that could meet it head on. You started that. Hmm. Hey, look, another one. I didn't even meet this version of you in person. You were a humble blacksmith in a far-off region. Honestly, from what I understood, you weren't even that good. <laughs> no offense. You were a tinkerer, though. And unbeknownst to me, or anyone else, really, even you... You were working on the most dangerous weapon in human history. The Empire Killer. The God Slayer. A firebomb that burned out of control and consumed the world. The Printing Press. Your design was trash, but it worked. It worked well enough to be copied, and... It was good enough concept that it was improved upon. Soon we had these damn things coming out of our ears. Suddenly every one of you jerks could read and write, and suddenly everybody's got an opinion. This is the killing blow right here. Sure, I kept spreading my empire for a few centuries, but it was all over right here. That fire that burned my empire to ashes lit by a crappy smith in some jerkwater town. I really 
really hate you. Have I made that clear yet? You know, you know what pisses me off the most, though? When I first learned of your existence, I was certain it was all planned. Like, how couldn't it be? A, a single action, thousands of miles away, led to me taking a loss hundreds of years later? I, I thought maybe some rival god had set you upon me. The other week, my assistant was on a date, so I was babysitting this kid, cute little fella. I took him down to the children's museum, and they had this weird machine. You'd put one of those worthless copper coins in it, and it would set off all these little weird reactions, like marbles rolling down tracks or dominoes knocking each other over. And after, like, ten minutes, it would eventually roll a gumball down at you. Stupid, right? You're like that. I've had time to ruminate on this, and I've realized something. You never planned anything. You were just too dumb and naive to realize that one little action can't save the world. You were just a monkey set loose in a space shuttle pushing whatever buttons you wanted. Look, look, look at this one. This is the one where I finally realized I was never going to win. After all the chaos you caused with the printing press, I decided that if you can't beat them, join them. I reformed into a brand new empire, one based on science and technology, a technocratic military dictatorship, and I launched the greatest war this world has ever seen. I expected it to be over in the summer. It lasted a hundred years. Entire generations lived and died in these trenches. Most of your lives weren't a soldier, but this one's an exception. Although, you'd have never called yourself one. You were just a clerk at a store before we drew your draft number and stuck you in this trench. It feels like forever ago, though. You've gone over three times already. Nobody lives that long out here. You hear that siren? That means you're going over again. Nobody even questions it. You grab the rifle, you put on your helmet, and you get to the ladder. And you... freeze. Are you defiant? Tired, afraid, or just freaking out. The commissar comes around, cocks his gun. Records show that he's actually two years younger than you. His job is to shoot anybody that refuses to attack. I raised him and a hundred thousand others from birth to do exactly what he's doing here. And look at that. He freezes too. I guess I didn't indoctrinate him enough. Suddenly, the offensive is stalled. There's chaos. The colonel comes up from the bunker, shouting. Somebody takes him out with a shovel. Full-on trench mutiny. By the time the telegraph gets to me, the entire army is refusing to advance. By the time I've got a response planned out, it'll spread to the navy and the sky force. And then it's in the fields and the factories. And I started hearing about peace talks and provisional governments. I tried to make a stand. I grabbed my old sword and stood out in the square, shouted a speech that I felt was sure to stir up everybody's blood. But they were past that. They pelted me with whatever they had around. I had to escape in the night under the cover of darkness. I woke up a god, went to bed a refugee. Looks like it's leaving your system. You realize who you are now? Have I said I hate you yet? I feel like I should drive that point home. I was forged in heaven 
by the goddess Saket as her last gift to this world. She made me strong, wise, determined. She gave me magic and immortality, filled my mind with knowledge of architecture and agriculture and metallurgy, gave me a purpose, a mission, and you, you twisted little soul, you ruined my dreams without even thinking about it. That was just three lives out of thousands. All the same, just ruining my life without even thinking. I'm trapped forever on this rock, damned and lost, cut off eternally from my mother, and the only one I can talk to about this is you, of all people. Why do I have to watch the world pass me by? Do you know what that's like? To watch everything I build fall apart, no matter how long I try. Sirket was wrong to make me. Nobody's meant to live this long. I had someone I loved once. A warrior from a rival kingdom. I loved that warrior in a way you can't even imagine. <laughs> I renamed cities in their honor. Gave them every treasure under the sun. I burned entire nations. Just to watch the sparks dance in their eyes. When the warrior finally died of old age, I wept for a year and a day. I built a temple that dwarfed most cities and ascended them to godhood. And now I can't even remember their face. I went back to that place a while ago. It's sunk below a reservoir now. <gasps> you can take those glass-bottom boats and go see it. I went out there and saw the temple, rotting beneath the cold, clear water. I started sobbing. <laughs> The other tourists thought I was crazy. I wanted that warrior's memory to live forever. But it's all gone now. Like everything I built. Like everything I did. <sighs> what am I even doing here, man? I kidnapped you just to bitch about my life, I guess. I must sound like a total bag of shit whining about being an immortal demigod. <sighs> Here, let me untie you. You're good to go. And uh, don't worry about the strike. I'll concede to all of your demands or... Whatever. I just gotta sit for a moment. <sighs> what are you doing down here? I told you you could go. No, wait, don't go. I don't know why, but you feel good to be around. <laughs> Sweet Sirket, I'm a mess right now. I just... I don't know, I guess I just really miss my mom. <laughs> I 
really wants to be mayor. I haven't been in charge of anything in a while. And it's like practically just a ceremonial position anyway. You really can't let me win, can you? I tell you what. I'll agree <clears throat> to whatever the renters want if you hang around with me once a week. Deal? I just really want someone to talk to about this stuff. All right. I can live with that. 